Welcome back and time to seek some views on the news. The World Wide Web has just marked its 25th birthday and its founder Tim Berners-Lee used the occasion to highlight the need for internet freedom. And we're going to be talking more about that with our guest this morning, Matt Driscoll, senior editor of Reuters News Agency. Thanks for joining us uh, this morning, Matt. Good morning. Uh, going to start off with the story from AFP. Web founder calls for internet uh, bill of rights. Uh, how plausible do you think that is? I'm, frankly, I think it, it's not. It, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. But I think when you can't get people at the United Nations, for example, to agree on Syria and all of the bad things that are happening there and the thousands of children that are that are dying and starving uh, when you can't get the united nations to agree on something like that i think it's almost impossible or it, uh, highly implausible that you're going to find someone we're going to find a group that's going to come together and say okay we're going to put together a bill of rights for the internet uh, well i mean if we're going to take a, a step back and just say we're going to have fewer controls of the web which is essentially what he's trying to get at uh, do you think that that's necessarily uh, important at the moment i think it's important i think if you look at what's happened in the united states with the revelations by edward snowden uh, we have the u.s government which is spying on its own people um, and i think that was one of the points that he made in, in the article that was made in the article was it's not so much censorship where you're trying to keep people from looking at pornography or something like that, for example. It's the fact that you can't even trust the Internet anymore because you don't know who's going to be reading your email, who's going to be your, your messages, your whatever messages you're sending, uh, and you're not going to be able to trust it. And that's the big problem is the trust factor. Well, it's interesting that you say that because he does actually uh, say that people are becoming complacent with their freedoms. He's a big supporter of Edward Snowden, uh, of course. Would you agree that people are being complacent with their freedoms? I think to a certain extent, yes. I think that's a very good statement. Uh, when people are, when you have jobs and when you have your favorite TV show and, and when you're able to send text messages to grandmother over the, over the internet or, or Skype your grandparents or something like that, uh, people, don't, people don't feel the need to go out and fight for so many things. But I think that slowly, bit by bit by bit, these freedoms, especially the freedom to communicate without fear of having that communication overheard or used against you in some way, those freedoms are being eaten away bit by bit. And I think that's the problem we have to worry about. Sure, but we live in an age of surveillance where everyone can produce content and you're being watched constantly, not necessarily just by uh, authorities, but uh, even from your neighbors. I mean, is it not just natural that people are just uh, accepting that, that their freedoms are being, are being infringed upon? Or Ab no, absolutely. You're absolutely right, because y you can't walk down the street without in, in from London to Singapore to Beijing to any other city without having dozens of cameras focusing on you. And I saw some study one time where it said on an average day, a person in London will be, will be photographed by one of the cameras at least 30, 40 times. So your images are there. You can't walk down the street or go to a, a, a rock concert without having somebody film you with their, with their mobile phone. Um, so that, that feeling of privacy is going away, uh, the right to, and, and actually in public now you have no right to be left alone almost. A lot of people would argue that they feel safer with uh, the level of surveillance as it is as well, particularly with international threats of uh, terrorism that, we've, that have been more prominent in the last uh, two decades, decades than ever before. Um, so with regards to the Internet, I mean, I think a lot of people might say they're quite happy with the level of surveillance that exists at the moment. True, um, and, and, but I think a lot of these things, is, it's based on fear, and, and that's what we have to worry about, and fear makes people do stupid things. Uh, you look at the fear that was generated after 2000, after 9-11, um, and look at what the U.S. government did, where it, it basically started torturing people, uh, all of these things. So fear should not be the reason that these freedoms are being eaten away. Sure. Uh, well, let's, let's move on to our next article because the, the two are linked. This one's from uh, the South China Morning Post. China must keep in, internet secure and free. Uh, 
the article stresses the importance of the internet and uh, how that's going to help China as a country develop. Uh, but it also talks about um, the, the danger of further strengthening China's uh, great firewall. Um, of course, we're talking about infringing people's um, access or, or use of the internet even further here. Uh, how likely do you think that that's going to, going to be in China? That they'll open up even more? That it will even close up even more. Oh, I think it's, it's and again, it goes back to what I was saying before, it, it's a matter of fear. China, in, in a way, it fears its own people because if the truth came out in a wide manner about Tiananmen Square, uh, if the truth came out about the Great Leap Forward and, and all of these things in, in China's history uh, that are now censored on the mainland, if those came out, then uh, the people would be rightly upset in many ways, to put it mildly. Um, so I don't think China is going to loosen the Great Firewall anytime soon. Uh, I think it's going to take something major to happen for them to even consider that. Uh, going back to this sort of issue of surveillance and, and needing to monitor the internet, of course, um, with the danger of or, or the fear of dissent among Chinese authorities, I mean, that's, that is essentially why um, uh, the surveillance exists. I mean, with um, potential breakaway regions like Xinjiang uh, in China, it, it, do you not agree that it's important for China to, to monitor the internet um, and make sure that, that, uh, that responsible uh, content is being being published on, on the World Wide Web. Define responsible content. I mean, what you might define as responsible content, I may define in a different in a different way. Certainly. And there's there's lots of bad stuff on the internet. Granted, and but it's like there's a lot of bad stuff on the television. If you don't like it, change the channel. If you don't like it on the web, go to another website. So there are ways to deal with that. I, I think you do make a valid point. I mean, China, in many ways. There has is so large, has so many problems, has so many people, uh, and I'm, rem I'm reminded of something. I think it was either Mao or Zhou Enlai had said to Kissinger, when Kissinger was talking about human rights and you need to let your people go in, in a sense and things like that, and he said, "Fine, we'll let our people go. How many do you want washing up on the shores of California? Do you want 30 million? Do you want 40 million? Something like that?" Because he was making the point that if China didn't control its people, there would be uncontrollable immigration, illegal immigrants flooding into all these different countries. So that's kind of an interesting point. So to a certain extent, yeah, maybe they need to control it. On the other hand, I'm a big believer in, in the freedom of information. That's how I make my living, and, and I think information should be free. Absolutely. I mean, there's two, two ways of looking at it. On one hand, you could have everyone um, p uh, writing whatever they like on the Internet, um, or you have the monitors which control um, what, what's published. Uh, but, uh, you know, if people were able to um, write whatever they liked, what about, you know, falsities or irresponsible writing? Um, Absolutely. Even, even in the United States, with, with the First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, there are limits. You have the old, the old saying, you cannot walk into a crowded movie theater and shout fire. So you can't do that. So there have to be responsible limits. Um, and again, you don't walk into a movie theater sure. and shout fire. Uh, but I think I lean more toward freedom of information and with certain constrictions, like I just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, now, just quickly moving on to our last story, LG plans to cut premium TV prices. This one's uh, from the Korea Times. Um, LG is planning to cut its TV prices in an uh, incredibly um, a competitive market. What, what are the implications? Uh, I think it's going to be tough for the Japanese exporters. Um, the Koreans are eating their lunch, uh, Samsung, LG, um, you, you basically you've got uh, two markets, you have the, the really low cost TV sets coming out of China, uh, you've got the really good ones coming out of South Korea, and the Japanese have lost the plot. Do you think um, that uh, the Japanese uh, uh, electronics companies are ever going to be able to compete again? I don't know. Sony has, has had so many problems. Sharp has had so many problems. Uh, Sony, there was talk uh, not too long ago about hiving off its TV division. The new CEO came in and said, no, we're going to keep the TV division. Um, but they, you know, for a company that invented uh, the Walkman and then saw that taken away by the iPod, Apple took its market from that. Um, I just really think they've lost the plot. I think it's going to be very difficult for them to ever regain the market share that they had before.
All right. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time to talk about uh, that story. Thanks very much indeed for joining us this morning. Uh, Matthew Driscoll from Reuters. That's it for First Location. Do stay with the channel for AM Live just ahead.